Hi everyone, this is Corey from Radical Health and I'm going to show you how to make milk kefir. Now milk kefir is my favorite ferment. That's because it's super nutritious, it's loaded with probiotics and prebiotics and I talk all about its nutritional benefits in another video. Um, it's also my favorite ferment because it's the easiest to make. It literally takes about a minute or two to make it. Most of it is just leaving it there to ferment. And it's one that you can make quickly every day and consume regularly. And that's the key with any fermented food is to consume it regularly to get the benefits. All right, so let's jump into it. Let's talk about what you're going to need. So you're gonna need just two ingredients. First is the milk kefir grains themselves, and the second is milk. And then you're gonna need some basic kitchen equipment, which everyone has, and I'll show you that in a bit. All right, so let's get to these grains. They kind of look like brains. <laughs> and what these are are not grains at all. They just sort of resemble grains. Um, what they are is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, or a SCOBY. So they're bacteria and yeast living in harmony with one another. And what they have done is they have created this environment to live in, mostly cellulose. And there's all kinds of SCOBYs out there. So you've probably heard of the kombucha SCOBY, just a crazy looking thing. These kefir grains are a little cuter. There's also water kefir grains, which are similar to this, but clearer because the scobies will take on the color of whatever liquid or medium they're in. And then we have apple cider scobies as well for apple cider vinegar. Now, these little grains uh, will come in various sizes. Sometimes you get them really small, and then sometimes they could grow to be like really quite big, like this one. Um, I've seen them, you know, quite large before, even that big. And they will grow and they will divide, so you'll have more and more and more over time. So you could continue to use them and make a lot of milk kefir, or you could give them away. And so, that brings me to the topic of where do you get them? Well, first of all, you could get them from a friend if you know someone who makes milk kefir, but you could often find live grains on Kijiji. People sell them. You shouldn't really pay more than five to $10 for a tablespoon or two, um, but you could also buy freeze-dried grains from companies like Gem Ferments or Cultures from Health. Cultures of health, you'll get them in the mail and then you rehydrate them. The process is pretty straightforward and you could follow the directions on the package. All right, let's talk about the second main ingredient and that is milk. So you need to use, first of all, an animal milk. So that includes cow's milk, goat's milk, buffalo milk, I guess sheep's milk, camel's milk if you have access to but an animal milk, and that's because this milk contains lactose, and those kefir grains need lactose to feed on. It's like their main carbohydrate. It what makes them grow, makes them disperse their bacteria and yeast into the milk, and so it needs to feed regularly on the lactose. Now you can trick the kefir every three to four ferments. You could put it into a non-dairy milk, you could put it into something like coconut milk or almond milk and it will ferment it. But in order to thrive and survive in the long term, these grains need the lactose. So you're going to have to feed it with regular dairy milk. Um, a second thing about the milk is that you want to make sure that it is uh, pasteurized and you don't want to use raw milk. First of all, um, it's because the raw milk have its own set of beneficial bacteria and yeast. And so why would you want to pasteurize it and destroy them? If you can consume it in its raw form, get those in you. It's raw milk is fabulous for you. In Canada, it's like a felony to get. So unfortunately, I have a little experience drinking it, but I know it is loaded with beneficial probiotics. Um, secondly, what happens is when you put in these kefir grains into raw milk, they'll ferment it somewhat. Um, but they're competing with those indigenous yeast and bacteria in there and it doesn't work in quite the same way. So you don't get the probiotic profile that you do with using milk kefir in pasteurized milk. 
So say you can only get raw milk, you should actually pasteurize it before making milk kefir in order to get the full benefits. Okay, let's talk about fat content. Well, you could use whatever fat content of milk you usually use. So that could be 2%, it could be homogenized milk, that's really up to you. Um, you know, the, the fat content isn't gonna change um, the more you let it ferment. Your, whatever fat you put into it is the fat that you're gonna be drinking, so that's up to you of how much fat you want to consume. What will happen is the lactose is gonna be digested. So the longer you let it ferment, the less lactose it will have. So those are your options for milk. Um, let's talk about equipment. So what you need is a pitcher to strain your ferments, your kefir in to. You need a sieve, and I will talk about the different sieve options in a moment. And you need a jar to put it in. So let's talk about uh, how to make the milk kefir. So you got your grains from someone. Usually they give it to you in a little bit of milk. What you're gonna do is just plop your grains into a jar. And what you need is about a tablespoon or two for about a cup or two of milk. It's not too particular. You don't have to do exact measurements with ferments. That's the beauty of it. Then you're just gonna pour your milk into the jar on top of it, all the way up. And then you'll want to just cover this either with a lid or a plastic lid or metal lid. We'll talk about metal in a second. Um, but you could also cover it with a dishcloth or a paper towel. Just make sure there's a rubber band around it because fruit flies love ferments. Um, now, unlike other ferments, you can seal this because we're only fermenting this for about 12 to 48 hours. So not enough gas builds up to cause explosions, which is an issue with other ferments, right? So with this one, you can leave it covered and that's why I tend to use the plastic lid. All right, so let's say, you know, it's been that 24 hours. That's usually how long I leave it to because I have this for breakfast every day, right? So I make it and then have it for breakfast and then make another batch. All right, so what you'll see is you will have your finished milk heifer. Um, the You'll see in the jar, and it's hard to see on camera here, that the curds and whey have separated. So um, you'll see sort of chunkier bits, and then you'll see more liquidy bits. And um, that's fine. That's, that's a good sign that this is working. In fact, if you get milk kefir grains, and say so you rehydrate them, a sign that it's not working is that it never does this, especially after like uh, 48 hours or 24 hours. Um, and you do want to let everything ferment at room temperature. All right, so you want to like ideally around 72 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure what that is in Celsius, even though I am Canadian. I, I grew up in the States, so I learned Fahrenheit, but 72 degrees Fahrenheit, so room temperature is what you want to let it ferment at. So it will be done and it will kind of be like gelatinous in some places and runny in the other places. That's just the curds and whey that have separated. So what you'll want to do is just give it a good shake before you strain it and then run it through a sieve. All right, so you will see on other websites, they say never use metal with milk kefir. But I will say that I always use the strainer and I don't have any issues with my milk kefir grains. Um, what I found, I did go out and buy a plastic strainer and what I found is that like it's just not big enough, it doesn't strain well, and I honestly barely ever use this, it's just here to show you what it looks like. So I use my big metal strainer, I have my pitcher, and I shake up my finished milk kefir after 24 hours of fermenting at room temperature, and then I strain it through here. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna wind up with most of the whey running through to the pitcher and then the rest of the milk solid staying on top. So um, basically what I, like, you could, could in your jar just fish out the milk kefir grains and then just consume it like that or add it to a smoothie. If a couple grains get into your smoothie, no problem because they're actually quite good for you. But I like to fish all of them out. I don't like to add them into my smoothie just because I, I give them away so much and I wanna share them that I don't wanna waste any. 
So I, I do strain it um, just so I could pick through what's left on top and fish out the grains better. So it's kind of fun to do. I do this first thing in the morning. So you pick out the grains and I put them in the jar that I'm gonna make more milk heifer in. And then once I'm done picking out all the grains, I just pour on the milk and use it again. And again, these will divide over time. So I might split them up into other jars or give some away, like I mentioned. Um, but yeah, so once I'm done picking out all these grains, what I'll do is I will take the milk solids on top and I'll take the sort of mostly whey at the bottom and I'll just dump that into a blender, blend it up and make my smoothie in the morning, which is a great way to use milk kefir. So in summary, what you do to make milk kefir is you put your grains in a jar, you add milk to it. You let it sit at room temperature anywhere between 12 to 72 hours or 48, up to you. And then the longer you let it go, the more tart it's gonna get. Then you uh, go to filter it if you'd like and you shake it up. Uh, you could fish out your milk kefir grains, put them aside, make another batch, throw everything into a blender or you could strain it out and then fish out your milk heifer grains and pour everything into a blender if you'd like and blend it up. Um, or you could make a smoothie bowl out of it. You could use the milk heifer for making dips or salad dressing. There's all sorts of recipes available and you can find those on my website too, www.radicalhealth.ca. Now, if you like your milk heifer more thick, more like Greek yogurt, what you'll do is just dump it out that way and keep that thick stuff on top. That's it, it's super easy. So, I hope you've seen why. This is my favorite ferment. It is super easy to make and uh, it's super nutritious for you. And the key is regularity, right? It's a ferment you can make every day. It's really simple. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients. And so if you continue to eat this every day, you'll definitely see the health benefits from it. All right, you can check out the recipe on my website, www.radicalhealth.ca. And of course, if you have any questions or any comments, leave them below. Thanks, everyone.